Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, because you woke us up this morning, clothed us in our right minds, and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for being such an awesome God that you neither sleep nor slumber. You, you take care of everything when we can't sometimes even take care of our little old selves. And we thank you for watching over us and keeping us. We ask you now, Lord, as we get ready to study your word today on this conference call and on this Facebook Live, we just ask you to bless us, Lord. Bless the technology. Bless your word, anoint afresh, that your word might be spoken in such a way that someone be encouraged, that someone might be strengthened, and that someone might even be saved. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We plead your blood right now. It's in the mighty and sufficient name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Our Sunday school lesson for this morning comes from Acts, the sixth chapter. Acts, the sixth chapter. Turn with me to the sixth chapter of the, the book of Acts. And we're going to be reading out of a New King James Version of the Bible. Uh, it begins reading as thus, verse 1. Now in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because the widows were rejected in the daily or were neglected, excuse me, in the daily distribution. The twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, Is it not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministering of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Porcorius, and Nicano, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. That is, I read for you. Of the sixth chapter of Acts verses 1 through 8. And the title of our lesson today is uh, the call to witness. The call to witness. With, with a subtitle of uh, this ain't no desk job. <laughs> Uh, this ain't no desk job. That that that's a that's a that's a side thing. That's a side thing. But we we're dealing with the call to witness. The call to witness. 
And, and our key verse is verse 7. Um, it says again from, um, I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Uh, so God, message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted to hallelujah hallelujah that 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 is about the word of god increasing throughout the land and then many disciples coming even the jewish priests start coming to the faith oh hallelujah and so in this lesson, our key concept is that God can use anyone to spread the good news. He can use anyone to spread the good news. That's our key concept. And then I'm going to make it personal. He can use any of us to spread the good news, even you, even me. He can use anyone to spread his good news. Our, our, our keys for kids this morning for for the children uh, we're going to look at God wants us to know how to put him before anything else in our lives number two when things go wrong God wants us to pray to him for help and thirdly when we are close to God he can use us in very special ways to change people's lives. Oh, hallelujah. Don't, don't you want to be a part of changing someone's life, helping them along the way? Don't you want to be ones that, that when things go wrong, you know how to go and call on the name of the Lord? As I was telling people this week, this has been um, really the last two or three weeks here have been pretty hard for our family. Uh, but we've learned how to turn to the Lord. And we turn to the Lord for our help, for our comfort, for our strength. When things go wrong, turn to the Lord. Even when it's hard, we still have to trust in the Lord. And so as we dig into this lesson today, we're going to learn some simple facts. We're going to summarize how the 12 Apostles address the issues of the food and the distribution of the food in terms of ministry priority. We're going to look at some biblical principles to sense, to, to sense the ministry challenges of those who, who go out to evangelize and, and then the benevolence, even in our church today. We, we got to look at being benevolent and still look at evangelism. And then finally, our daily application is to make a plan to to, to be that kind of person to, to recruit and train and commission new workers for the ministry in, in our own local church body. And even as I, I, I do this ministry over, over the internet, I, I have to recruit people to, to come in and help. Uh, we had a situation this past weekend, as I was saying, um, uh, we've been going to funerals and going out to the grave sites and and performing the services or participating in the services of the home goings of our sister our cousin and one of our nephews and and that becomes taxing uh even my mom at her church had had a member to pass it becomes taxing and so we need to have people that are in place so that that we don't have to do the whole job by ourselves. And so unfortunately on, on Friday, uh, this past Friday, uh, uh, I, I was so tired and wore out and, and uh, from traveling back and forth from St. Louis to Alabama and my cousin, Pastor Paul, who co-hosts with me, he had to do a funeral and that was his third funeral for the, for the week. And, and I said, man, let, we just gonna have to cancel. We don't, we don't have anybody in our stead at this point. To, to step up to the plate, we're just going to cancel on Friday night lights and, and then we'll start back up. Everyone will understand. And so that's what we ended up doing. But but our prayer is, our prayer is, is that we have a, a, a third or fourth, fifth person that can step up. Uh, Pastor, I mean, Apostle Kizzy, and I, I'm going to call Apostle 
Pastor Apostle Kizzy. She had a plan for hers. Her ministry, she she played previous recordings. And, and that may be a way of doing it to to, to correct or to, to, to do things using the technology. But anyway, let's get into our lesson. I, I'm just just kind of mentioning those things for those who missed us on Friday nights and and uh, let you understand why we, we were out. We, that Jesus even had times where he had to go and rest and pray. Hallelujah. So in this lesson today, um, this, 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 this is Acts. And, and, and Acts is, is one of the most exciting books in the Bible. It, it, it tells the story of the birth of, of the church after Jesus' ascension unto heaven. And this, 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 this book is Luke's uh, uh, rendition uh, uh, as he's writing this book and he's trying to, to put the story together so that everybody can get an understanding. And Jesus in this, in this gospel, in this, in this word, in this good news, told us that we're going to be his witnesses in, in the first chapter. Witnesses to him in Judea and uh, uh, Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world, starting at Jerusalem. And he said he's going to give us power. And so when we get to that second chapter, the power that he promised us, the power of the Holy Spirit, that power that came down like fire and flaming tongues upon the, the disciples, that fire, that power, that dudamus power, to, to be a, 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 a Christian, to, to, to be a person who can speak God's word and, and receive his guidance and, and all of that came in the person of the Holy Spirit. And after the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter got up and started preaching and teaching and, 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 and the multitude of people came and joined the church. And with this multitude of people from all over the land came to Jerusalem and now they're part of the people of the way. They believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There had to be a way to take care of the people. And the people came together and they shared everything with one another. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in breaking of bread and fellowship and in prayer. But along came now the sixth chapter. There were those who were Greek speaking. Or, or Hellenistic or Hebrew speaking people, the Hebrews who had converted to the way. And then there was the Hellenistic folks, people who 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 who, who were converts, if you will, from 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 being a, a, a Gentile to, to being a proselyte of the Jewish, and now they are a people of the way. And there, there became a disturbance. These are called growing pains. And that's my first point. They got growing pains. And, and that's what happens when the church grows. When, 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 when you have a business and you're growing, you have growing pains. I, I can remember even as a child, uh, uh, I went through growing pains. Uh, we had to go to the doctor, and God gave me a vision of this 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 doctor uh, 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 visit. I was hurting all over my body, and the doctors examined me. They questioned me if somebody beat you up, you got bruised. I said, hey, "No, no, no." Me and my brother may wrestle, but I, I'm hurting all over. And they decided at the end, you having growing pains. Your, your body is growing. And it's just hurting because it's stretching out. And, 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 and when the word of God is being preached and people are, are receiving the word and they're coming to the church, or coming to the ministry, you're going to have growing pains. 
And so we're going to look at these growing pains that the church, the people of the way were having. Verses 1 through 4 of Acts chapter 6. And it says, now in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplying, there also rose against the he rose against the Hebrews by the Hellenistic because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. The twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, Is it not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Therefore, brethren, Seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who may be appointed over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. They were having growing pain. They were having problems. And so, with a problem like this, you got to make sure that your problem and your priorities are lined up right. What was the problem? The problem was you had a bunch of huge, a huge crowd of people that had to be fed every day. Housing had to be provided for them because some of them were not from Jerusalem. And it looked as though the Hebrews were, were uh, being complained because the Hellenistic folks and their widows seemed like they were being neglected. Y'all know, y'all done heard this. It just ain't fair. I, we, it, this just ain't fair. We ain't being treated fair. The the, 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 the Greek-speaking people, the Hellenistic folks who were there in Jerusalem going like, hey, we're just not being treated fairly. Look like we ain't we getting the crumbs and, and all the Hebrews are getting a big piece of bread and all of that. So that was the problem. And it wasn't just a problem you could just kick to the side. You know, we, we have people complaining about everything in churches. The music's too loud. The drummer's too loud. The, the, the audio system's too loud. I don't like the color of the carpet. Uh, why did y'all change? You know, we got all that kind of kind of stuff going on, and that's in every church. But, but this one here, it wasn't just a simple problem. It wasn't just a, a, a nagging complaint. This was a real issue because if this issue continued, it would divide the church. And so the disciples said, now look, we know this is a real problem, but we got priorities. Our priority is to preach the word of God. And spread the word of God. That's our priority. We, 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 we can't be responsible for serving the tables, for waiting on the tables, for, for doing this day in and day out. We, we got to concentrate on the word of God and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Growing pain growing pains. That's what they were having. They had a problem. But they set their priorities. Now this serving table, some some uh, theologians say that this 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 meant that the people uh, uh, the serving the tables weren't just the distribution of the food, but it was also the money changing uh, apparatus that was going on. You remember Jesus got mad at the folks changing money in the temple, and, and but but there was still a money exchange that had to go on, and, and the disciples were like, "No, we're not worrying about the financial matters and the and the serving of the meals right now. We are concentrating on on sharing the word." Now, don't get this wrong. Now, see, some people 
they they get upset with this. They go, well, you know, the pastor don't have to worry about the money and all that. No, no, it's a concern. The pastor, the preacher, the the the, 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 the is still over the church, but that can't be their concentration. They 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 they, they can be CEO of a of a church, but 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 they don't have to be hands on all the time. You got to find good people that can step in and help out. Because preaching and teaching the word is just not a desk job. You know, some folks think that that all a pastor does is is, 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 is sit at his desk on Saturday night and, and get his message together so that he can deliver it on Sunday. But they don't see the pastor going to the to the jails, they don't see the pastor visiting folks at the hospital, going to people uh, bedside, going doing funerals. They don't see doing weddings. They don't see the pastor on his knees praying to God, meditating on God's word day and night. They don't see those things, and they don't see the pastor wherever he goes, preacher, teacher, or minister, or anyone who called into the ministry or anyone who is called and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Everywhere we go, we have to tell people what thus says the Lord, whether we tell them in our words, with our words, or with our lives, with our lips, or with our lives. We got to show this world that there is a Savior that's in the world today and that he cares. And they can bring all of their burdens to him. And he cares. So we have the problem. And now the priority is set in these growing pains. But the, they had a solution. Oh, I love the solution. Listen to the solution in verse 3. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so the solution was for them to go out and find some good men full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit with good reputation. Now, most people, when we read this, we know that this this is the beginning of of of, of what we call today deacons in the church, and 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 and, and, and it's and it's okay. Uh, but but the the deacon actual authorship wasn't established until later on. Over, over in in First Timothy, but this right here was 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 a, was a calling for, for 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 the church to find some men in the church that's going to step up to the plate and not going to just do a, a, a desk job, but they're going to do a full service job. And so that was the solution. And then the, 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 the solution was acceptable. That's, that's verse 5. Listen to verse 5. And it says, And it pleased the people, the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, Philip, Procurius, Nicanor, Timon, Prominus and Nicholas, apostolite. That's who they chosen. They made a selection. Oh, hallelujah. If we could come up with solutions in the church and then all agree on the solution and the selection, we would have much more peace in our local churches. The people made the selection. And one of the things that I teach wholeheartedly as a pastor is once P 
people have been selected to lead and to guide folks in the church and to be part of the, the administration or be part of head of the committees. They're still doing this under the pastor. Just because you get a leadership role, don't upserve the pastor's authority. Because there's, there's a promise God says, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. When people get out of order, they cause confusion. And that's oftentimes what happens in the church. They say, well, well, they chose me to be over this committee. They chose me to be head deacon. I'll run this thing. Oh, man, that, that, that hurts so many people in church. That hurts so many people. And then pastors who, who are insecure with their own authority and ability, they, they come down and put the hammer down on people instead of giving them love. We have to be careful with this thing called church and how we as pastors and people, congregation, administrate this thing called church. Oh, hallelujah. So let's go on now. So they, they got a consensus, a pleasing consensus with the people. They made a solution and a selection. And now finally, we're going to look at the marvelous results. The marvelous results. And it says in verse 6, whom the, they set before the apostle, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. The apostles laid hands on these new seven men. They laid hands on them and they prayed for them. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's just so awesome. That's, that's showing that there's order in the church and not confusion. That's showing that the people, the people chose and made a selection, but the apostles wanted to make sure that it was in line with God. So they prayed. And only did they pray, they laid hands on them. And the laying on of hands is an expression that, that is used to, 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 to show that, 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 that we support them and we affirm them and we identify with them. The laying on of hands. It's an expression of affirmation. It's an expression of support and identification of someone who is getting ready to go into the ministry. The laying on of hands. Oh, hallelujah. We could spend some time there, but we, we're going to move on. So that, that, that was, that was, the 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 so result of them choosing these seven men and then it says in verse 7 the word of god spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith the growth, the growing pains happen, but even in the growing pains, more growth came. Not only did more growth come, but, but, but even those who had previously fought against Christ, the priest of the Jerusalem temple, were now even being obedient to the faith. They were being convinced. They were being changed. And not only was the gospel spreading to them, but verse 8 says, and that Stephen, that one full of faith and full of power, 
he also did great wonders and signs among the people. God gave him power to do great signs and wonders. Also, so what, what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying? What are you saying, teacher? What are you saying? I'm saying that God not only gave that power to the apostles, but he also gave it to other people to do signs and wonders. We are all called to be God's witness. No matter where we go, we are all called to be the kind of person that will pray for folks, lay hands on people, and pray to God that he performs signs and wonders. We are all called to do this. And I just, I just want to encourage you. Some people have a call to be a pastor, to be a preacher, to be an apostle. And, and all the, 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 the uh, five-fold ministries. But we are all called to be God's witness at our jobs, in our homes, in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our tribulations, to be a witness for God. Oh, hallelujah. As we get ready to close the lesson, here are some of the points to ponder. God does not neglect anyone. God shows favor to everyone. His grace is amazing. As leaders of the church, we must be wise to acknowledge the importance of delegating responsibility to others. As leaders of the church, we also must be set apart. Take the time to pray. Take the time to study God's word so God can use us effectively. God was able to use those seven chosen. So we must be willing to help and to serve others. Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you have a plan for each and every one of us Please help us to always pray and to ask you to tell us how we can be used to help other people get close to you and have their lives changed. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Before I end the recording, I always like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. That's the greatest change you could ever make. It's the greatest help you could ever receive. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Please repeat after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead I repent of my sins please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart I invite you Jesus to become the Lord of my life to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life in Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Facebook, we're going to close this recording. Next week, we're going to look at um, Philip and the eunuch in Acts chapter 8. So you can get ready for that. Uh, if you want to join us on from Facebook over to the conference call to have a um, discussion of the lesson, you can reach us at 910 218 0531 again 910 218 0531 be blessed facebook until next time